Let us go to God in prayer. Lord God, open our hearts and minds by the power and presence of your Holy Spirit, that as the scripture is read and your word is proclaimed, that we may be filled with new life, that we may be filled with hope, renewal, and the salvation of our souls. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be satisfactory in your sight, our rock and our salvation. Amen. The Gospel lesson this morning is from St. John's Gospel, the 20th chapter, beginning in the first verse. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their home. But Mary, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rab Rabbi, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and to your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had seen the things and all about him. Christians throughout the world in this day proclaim this day. Scream out, Hallelujah! Because Jesus has risen from the dead. Risen indeed. Not so fast, says Mary the Magdalene. For on that Easter morning, she was in a different place. She was in a world of hopelessness, of pity, perhaps a little self-pity there. Her world at that moment was not an hallelujah world. It was not a world of joy, but a world of mourning, of loss, and of hopelessness. She heard what Jesus said before he was crucified. But now in her mind, as she peered into an empty tomb, all that Jesus said was not true. For she saw Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus carry away her friend's body and bury Jesus. And in her mind, dead is dead is dead is dead. For Jesus, that was not the case. But for Mary, she could not get beyond the tomb. The scandal of someone stealing her friend's body. 
She just couldn't get out of her mind. It was overwhelming her. She couldn't move beyond that place. Perhaps at that moment, she was entombed herself. Maybe her life, as she knew it, ended at the old rugged cross, its nastiness and its stains and everything else. But if the cross is the end of the line, then truly death would have dominion. But this morning, saints, this morning we say that death has been swallowed up in victory, and we live anew because of the empty tomb, in spite and because of the cross. You see, Mary was so engrossed in the empty tomb and all the things that were around that empty tomb engrossed in the empty wrappings of death that was left behind, she was unable to see life. She was unable to see beyond that. Unable to move beyond her present reality. You ever feel like that? You ever feel like you're trapped by the circumstance of life, trapped in a moment in time, and can't seem to get out of that trap? Well, that's where Mary was. Well, like Mary, we tend to dwell in the empty tomb more than we would like. Maybe because it's a little too familiar to us. Maybe in an odd sort of way, it may even be comfortable. If nothing else, it keeps our mind occupied. Pity and all that stuff has a way of doing that for sure. She had what we know in the scientific community as the Eeyore syndrome. Jesus is dead. The tomb is empty. Someone stole the body. She just couldn't get out of the Eeyore syndrome. She just couldn't get out of that all is lost, all is bad. And nothing is good. And that'll keep going until Jesus finally calls us and says, get your head out of that tomb. You hear my voice. But he just doesn't say, hey, bud, get out of there. Or, hey, friend, come on out. Jesus called Mary by name and calls us by name. And at first, his voice could not be understood. Maybe we weren't just tuned in quite right at that moment. But then, when we hear the voice of the Master, when we feel that calm and that joy beyond joy, we know, we know that our salvation, our Savior, is calling us out of the tomb to live beyond any joy that we can conceive. And that is what Easter is all about. Easter is living in the joy of the resurrection, the joy of an intimate relationship with God, which translates into an incredible relationship with each other. You see, God resurrected his son that we may love as God loves us. For God is calling us to leave all that other stuff behind just as Jesus left that other stuff behind in the tomb where it belongs. Because Christ has risen. Christ has risen indeed. John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist movement in England, once told someone that was, were really criticizing how someone else was thinking about an issue of faith, said, 
except for those things that strike at the root of Christianity, we think and we let think. So the question is, what is the root of Christianity? That's what we're celebrating this morning. The root of our faith the root of Christianity is the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Without the resurrection, there is no Christmas. Why bother? Without the resurrection, there is no hope. So why bother? But in fact, Christ was raised from the dead. In fact, there is no doubt and there is nothing more important, nothing more precious than that one fact. You see, the power of the resurrection gives us amazing freedom. I've talked to folks out and about that don't want to be a part of a church and don't want to be part of this, part of that because of all the rules and all the regulations and things you have to live by and all of that stuff. But our faith and what we celebrate this morning is the most incredibly freeing thing on the face of the earth. It's not a set of rules to live by. It is a life by which to live. And because of that, we can start to lighten up a little bit. We can start to have a little spring in our step, just a little bit. We can start having a little bit of fun. Well, we can come out in front of 200 people and just start talking loud and singing and all and dancing and all that stuff because God has given us the freedom to do so. God has given us the freedom and the joy to celebrate. And we don't have to return to the people that we once were. We don't have to return to the empty tomb. Far too much time was spent there. Far too much time spent on the negative. Far too much time was spent on the anger and on the frustration and the anxiety. Far too much time has been spent there. God says, get out of the tomb. And I will set you free. I got a word for you. And the word is eternal life. Today, we can start to live that life. And we can have our risen Savior start to control our lives instead of our human circumstance. We can mourn the loss of loved ones and celebrate their new life. And we can say it's okay. We can free ourselves from being judge and jury of self-righteousness. I don't know about you, but that just takes far too much energy for me. I remember Billy Graham was asked a question of someone. A fellow came up to Dr. Graham and said, what do you think about this guy? Do you think he's going to go to hell? Dr. Graham just paused a minute and said, I don't know. Thank God I'm not the one to make that decision. I think those were words of wisdom. See, all that stuff is up to God. So Easter gives us another chance, another opportunity to live in the light of day and leave the darkness of the tomb behind, to walk in the path that is eternal life. You see, I think God just wants a relationship with us, a loving relationship with us. And in turn, we are called to share that relationship with each other unconditionally. That's eternal life. We don't have to wait until we physically die because we can enjoy eternal life 
right now. When we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we accept this newness of life. We accept this lightness of step. We accept this joy that goes beyond joy. That's what Easter is all about. So it seems to me that God has given us a choice. And yes, we have to choose one or the other. God gives us a choice this morning. We can stay in an old empty tomb. We can do that. We can get up in the morning and keep our lives entombed. We can get up with an Eeyore syndrome. We can get up all grumpy even after the first three cups of coffee or four or six. We can do that. We can get up not loving our neighbor or loving God. We can get up and do that. That's our choice. Or we can celebrate the resurrection. We can get ourselves out of the tomb. And we can celebrate new life. We can love those with whom we disagree. We can love those whom we don't know. We can love just as God has loved us. We can get up and thank God for another day. We can get up and just celebrate what God has given us. One more day. Isn't that amazing? One more day we have to celebrate. So to wake up in the morning, maybe I'm dwelling on the second choice a little too much, but to get up and say, I have one more day to have fun. I have one more day to try to get it right. I have one more day to live in the power of the resurrection. That's what God has done for us in the resurrection. It is about the cross, but it's about a whole lot more. Because when we nail all the baggage that we carry to the cross with Jesus, when we nail all that stuff to the cross that hinders us from fully living, it is then we become fully alive. And saints, that is joy beyond joy. There is an empty tomb to be sure. Not for us to hang around, but for us to affirm. We are called to be Easter people. Not because we enjoy Easter music. Not because we enjoy coloring hard-boiled eggs. And yes, both these, e these eggs were hard-boiled. Not because we like brunch with the family or breakfast after worship. Not because we like Mally's chocolate, but that's pretty good. We are Easter people because we have been offered new life. Another chance to live life anew. And that is the life that God has intended for us to live all along. To be offered hope and assurance to us that those who have left this mortal life are alive forevermore. Isn't that an amazing gift? Isn't it an amazing gift to live a life that God had intended? And we can do that because we affirm this morning that Christ is alive forevermore. Because the power of God for us conquered the bonds of death so we can live eternity today. My prayer for all of us 
is that we accept this gift, the gift of the empty tomb, the gift of the resurrected Savior today. For Christ is calling each of us by name. Let us pray. Lord God, we give you thanks for this morning. We give you thanks for blessing us with the empty tomb and most importantly, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For as he was resurrected, so too shall we. Thank you, Lord, for this gift of salvation. May we accept it with joy. And may we be a faithful witness of all that you have given to us. 